The concept of what is fair in video games is a hard subject to broach as there's so many different branches of this topic to discuss. Now, in principle, a video game is exactly that, a game, and games are concepts that operate on rules, what the player is allowed to do and what they are not. An accessible or fair video game might be classed as something that teaches its players how to beat it while at the same time increasing the difficulty of achieving certain goals. This way, the title pushes its audience while never actually breaking its own rules. But these games, however, well, they ain't that. In fact, so acute are the moments of controller-breaking fury that they almost ruined their entire titles. These broke the rules, hacked their own logic, and sometimes downright cheated to get one over on you. However, we're gonna calm down and keep that blood as fizzless as we can and take a look at some of these rotters today. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video game moments so difficult, they were just unfair. Number 10. Donkey Kong 64 Beaver Bother in this bonus stage of the bloody awesome banana-rama that is DK64, you take control of a little crocodile who has to herd beavers into a hole in this room. We've all been there, right, lads? Well, hey, and doing so within this time limit gets you the rather unappetizing but shiny golden banana. Sounds simple, right? Well, it isn't. Not even a little bit, in fact. Now, I actually have a theory that this bonus stage was only inserted into Donkey Kong 64 because this game absolutely hates you. And here is my evidence. First off, the timer is really tight. Even speedrunners tend to complete it with just a second or two left on the clock, and that is just mad. The other problem is that the beavers don't always respond to your character. Now, most players lose this minigame repeatedly with only one beaver left who refuses to fall into the hole no matter what you do. Again, we've all been there, lads! And so completing this minigame is a chore that many don't even bother with. But should you wish to complete this title 100%, then this will be the bane of your existence. Number 9. Beautiful Joe – The Boss Rush if you've not played Beautiful Joe, then this banterous side-scrolling brawler earned its chops thanks to its outstanding visuals and comedy. However, a lot of people were taken back by how difficult that it could get. Nothing too extreme at first, and nothing that couldn't be overcome with some time investment, but then things hit a true roadblock with the boss rush. The boss rush that happens just before the final level sees Joe take on five bosses in a row. This will take you roughly 30 to 40 minutes to do, and it is mandatory. There's no checkpoints, and the only reprise that you get is the option to buy some goodies before the fifth boss battle. And you know what? Fire Leo, who is an absolute by the way, and is permanently off my Christmas lift, is a nightmare to beat. A boss rush is a mode that already is a bit of a hot topic when it comes to is this just lazy video game design, but it can be done right a la King Dice from Cuphead, but here, Beautiful Joe was making a mug out of you, man. Number 8. Mega Man – Yellow Devil the Yellow Devil serves as one of the last bosses in the original Mega Man, and his method for killing you is like how I operate within this company, splitting himself up and sliding over every channel that he can and then burying the player with his hot content. I work hard, boys and girls. In order to stand a hope of beating him in one piece, you are going to have to remember the 19 different ways that he can shift his frame from one side to the other, and that is a bloomin' nightmare. Even if you perfectly memorize his pattern, you are not out of the woods yet, as you can only hurt him when his eye becomes visible. Since his eye appears on a random spot on his body, you will have to take a guess where it's going to be. And this only pops out for a brief moment, which means that you best be ready to act as soon as you can by heckin' gum. And true, you can exploit him with a glitch, but that's not the way it's meant to be played. Although, considering how difficult Yellow Devil is, no one is really going to blame you for cheesing it. Number 7. Super Mario Land 2 – Wario's Castle You might be wondering why this Game Boy Classic is on this list, as after all, Super Mario Land 2 – Six Golden Coins has a reputation for being one of the easiest Mario video games ever made. But when you reach the final level, the difficulty curve skyrockets. Wario's Castle throws everything imaginable at you. Fire-breathing statues, collapsing blocks, platforms that rise into spikes, crushing pillars and swirling orbs that are really hard to dodge, and to top it all off, the floor is literally lava. Woof. But don't worry, you can just hit a checkpoint and then work your way from 
back there. Wait, what do you mean that there's no checkpoints here? Ah, oh, brilliant. So if you make one tiny mistake, it is back to the start for you. Normally, this level of challenge wouldn't be so bad, but in a game as easy as six golden coins, this feels so out of place, it's almost baffling. Number six, Silver Surfer, you die if you touch a wall. The Silver Surfer game that came out in 1990 is a broken piece of that is infuriating at every single turn. The controls feel like you're recovering from frostbite, and little things like having to tap the shoot button rather than hold for a continuous burst is just truly terrible design. And you will need to tap a lot, because there are enemies everywhere. And get this, you die in one hit. This is an insult to the Silver Surfer, since he's meant to be one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel comics, and yet here he will be washed away with the tide if he touches anything out of his comfort zone, like pumpkins, jars, ducks, and the deadliest of all enemies, a wall! Ooh! I guess the brickwork might scratch his chromatic exterior, but come on, mate, you are better than this. Number 5. The Simpsons, Bart Simpson vs. The Space Mutants The First Bloody Level Bart Simpson vs. The Space Mutants on the surface looks like a pretty nice time. You've got your Bort, you've got your aliens, you've got your pixel perfect jumping in a kid's game on? No, why? What makes matters worse is that enemies can be jumped on to defeat them, but with this pixel perfect requirement, it will mean that you will come off worse in a scrap with them 9 times out of 10. Also, what the hell were the developers smoking when they came up with the game design? In each level, Bart has to collect a number of specific items, like level 2 is hats, level 3 is balloons, level 4 is signs, and so on and so on, except for level 1, which does something completely different. Here, you need to turn every pink object red. Okay, why? It, it's just infuriating, because in places it's not as simple as just spraying things. You have to lure people out using other bits of the environment and complete weird timing puzzles, and this is in the first level, and then it's never used again! What the hell?! Wow. Number 4. Dragon's Lair – The Drawbridge now, I actually spoke about this game on a previous list of video games that kill you in the first 10 seconds, and you know what? There is a lot to be said about this. Because some games are tough, and then there are games like Dragon's Lair, where the average player can't even get through this first section. I don't mean that it's just difficult to beat the first level, it is difficult to beat the first screen in this game. In Dragon's Lair, you play as a knight called Dirk, who must rescue Princess Daphne, and you begin in front of a drawbridge guarded by a water serpent. If you touch the serpent, you die. If his fire touches you, you die! If you think you can just take your time and kill the dragon, guess what? You bloody die! Because standing on the bridge for longer than a second causes it to collapse. All of Dirk's movements are also really slow, making it difficult to retreat, duck, or jump out of the way when trying to dodge. And without exaggerating, this first screen of Dragon's Lair is harder than the final bosses of some games. Because of this, some players gave up on this section, never seeing anything beyond that infernal drawbridge. Number 3. F-Zero GX Cosmo Terminal When players are asked what is the hardest track in a racing game, Rainbow Road for the original Super Mario Kart often enters the conversation. Yet, if you listen closely, my friends, can, can you hear that? There's another thing screaming towards this chat like a blue shell made of piss and vinegar, and that is the F-Zero franchise. This series is made from the ground up to push you to your absolute limit, breaking speed barriers and controllers in equal measure. It is honestly dizzying the speeds that you can reach in these vehicles. And so, what would be the most infuriating thing to do with, with that in mind? Well, take away the bloody rails! Not only does Cosmo Terminal lack guardrails, but the course keeps splitting into three roads and you have to quickly decide which road to go down. And you better watch it, because if you so happen to fall off the edge, you won't get a friendly helping hand back on the track, but instead, you'll immediately fail. And with all of those opponents going the same speed, chances are that you'll be shunted off by the end of the first lap. It's a great game, but boy, has my life been shortened because of this. Number 2. Super Monkey Ball – The Glare on Expert 4 Super Monkey Ball is a clever little demon. It almost tricks you into thinking it's a super friendly game for kids with its lovely aesthetics and likeable characters, but just under its banana skin is a difficulty that many will find 
unappealing. Yes, puns, I've still got them in 2020. As the levels quickly ramp up in difficulty, you come to realize just how much precision is required in order to beat them. Expert 4 stands out as a particular annoying course because it does something that no other level does. Namely, like the Star Trek reboot, it has an unnecessary amount of lens flare. Not only does this level force you to navigate around inch-sized pathways, the glare of the sun gets in the way so you can't see. Oh, and to top it all off, this stage has lag in it. Lag in a game that requires precision and skill and is against the clock. Lag. Brilliant. How are you expected to complete a level with this in mind? It simply is not fair. And number one, Battletoads. Everything after level two. Now, the phrase Rage Quit is pretty much synonymous with the third level in Battletoads Turbo Tunnel. In this section, you have to zigzag around walls on your speed bike with surgical precision, and it has become arguably the most famous difficulty spike in video game history since its first levels are reasonably easy and almost nobody has ever beaten the third level. But here's the thing, the reason why players obsess about Turbo Tunnel is because 99.93% of people who play Battletoads have never played the levels after it. You think the rest of the game takes it easy after this? Not a chance. Level 4 is just as bad. The whole thing is covered in ice you're slipping around while trying to dodge obstacles from all directions. Level 5 is a racing level similar to Turbo Tunnel, except it glitches, making your character disappear sometimes so you have to guess where to jump. That doesn't seem fair at all. And Level 7 is another racing level because the company didn't get the memo that everyone hates these types of levels. So in short, while Turbo Tunnel is an absolute ass, the whole game never lets up after this difficulty spike. So if you manage to beat it, well, good luck because everything else after is just as bad. And there we go, those were 10 video game moments so difficult they were just unfair. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules, you can go follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And as always, you have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.